it is time that we do something about the navbar color in our website. And in this design, um, I have changed the background color of the navbar from blue to finally gray. Let me show you what it looks like right now. So let's go to the production website. And in here, when I scroll down, you can see the navbar color is blue. And this doesn't really match with the rest of our website's color palette, right? So I've, I've come up with something that looks like this. So if the user hasn't scrolled, we are going to have a completely transparent navbar, just like we have, just like the one that we have right now. But if the user chooses to scroll down, and I hope they do, um, the navbar is going to blur its background and transition its background color to a darker tone of gray, very gradually. And I want this to be a smooth transition. What's the first thing that we need to do? Well, obviously we need to set the new background color, right? So let's do that. So I need this new background color. It's 27, 27, 27, and alpha is 50. Okay. Let's go to our website code in here. And the navbar color is defined in here as a variable in navigation bar .sass. In here, if I modify this color to be 27, 27, 27, and let's make the alpha 0.85, that is going to change the background color of our navbar. Well, it's immediately better than before, right? It looks good. I mean, it fits better with the rest of the design of our website. With this image, it's fine. However, for example, with this image, it doesn't really match the background color, right? The background is this nice blue, but we're shadowing this nice blue with um, this ugly black. I don't want that to happen. So I want this transition to be as smooth as possible. So as you can see, if I scroll down just a little bit, it will transition into this state. So we only have three states, a transparent state and a fully collapsed um, opaque state. I want to transition between these two states in a very smooth way. How can we do that? We can um, use scroll listeners and depending on how much the user has scrolled, we can set a background color or the background transparency for the navigation bar. And the, the best example on uh, the scroll behavior is actually in here in the navigation bar itself. So we have this um, navigation, sorry, we have this scroll listener in here. And if the scroll height is more than 50 pixels, um, our style changes to the other thing, right? Um, there are several ways we can achieve this. We can have multiple classes that, um, so for example, I can I can say um, at 10 pixels display this color, at 20 pixels of height display that color. If the user scrolls 30 pixels, then display that color. Um, if the user has scrolled more than 100 pixels, then display this color. But that is not as clean. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to dynamically set the background cup background color property based on how much the user has scrolled. So we are going to say the background color's opacity is equal to the amount that the user has scrolled. So we have this function in here and um, this sets a class or this sets a variable called navbar expanded and then this navbar expanded class gets used in here. What if we can use, use this in a different way? We need to set the style for this navigation bar. And the way that you set style, we can we have an example in our landing page. So in the landing page, we set the background image um, style of our header in here using this using well this syntax. And I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm just going to copy this, come back to the navigation bar, and in here I'm going to add a new property. Well, exactly that property actually. And this is now going to complain that it cannot find the source, but that's okay. And instead of the setting the background image, I'm going to set the background color, maybe. Is that how you say it? I'm not sure, but we'll figure it out very soon. And uh, we're not going to set a URL. What we're going to do is we're going to set um, the RGB and alpha channels of that background. Okay, we're going to do something like this. So I need to copy this thing and I need to replace what's in here with that. The 27, 27, 27 is going to be the same, but we are going to replace this with something else. So you're gonna have dollar sign. And in here, I'm gonna define a new variable. Um, let's say constant transparency, transparency. 
and you're gonna have a set transparency and this time make sure I use the use state one okay and the initial value is going to be well it's going to be fully transparent right so it's going to be zero actually let's make this 0, 0.0 because it's going to be a double floating floating point um, variable and let's um, set the um, let's set the transparency to um, window dot page y offset divided by let's say 100 so if the user scrolls 100 pixels from the top that means we will be fully opaque okay so in here I'm gonna just put the transparency value not sure if that's gonna work on the first try but we can see oh I forgot to remove the other ones so you're not going to be using this class name right uh, we can remove the background color from there so we are going to remove this okay let's get back to the website and see the effect so if I scroll as you can see it's setting the background setting the opacity as I scroll that looks extremely clean compared to our previous approach so what I need to do now is I need to adjust the sensitivity of this because even if I scroll a little bit it becomes fully opaque when I scroll down at this level so I don't want it to be fully opaque I want this to go down to 0.9 or 0.85 maximum and I don't want it to be this sensitive so rather than dividing by 100 I can divide by 500 maybe to decrease the sensitivity of the operation so if I replace this 100 with 500 it will set the opacity to 1 if I scroll 500 pixels so if I keep scrolling down the opacity is going to increase very slowly and in a very subtle way. See that? That is a very smooth transition. That looks really nice actually. And I want to I want to change the background blur in the same way as I do the transparency. And I also want to make sure that this effect runs fast in Safari as well because Safari has some problems running um, running these things occasionally. Okay, let me make this full screen. Can I? Yep. Okay, Safari seems to be very happy as well. This is very smooth. Okay, um, we, there are further ways that we can optimize this. So I can tell this code to run every 50 milliseconds at max. So rather than just counting or calculating it every pixel, we can decrease the uh, frequency of the calculations. And that could be one optimization that we are going to do in one of the future streams. But as far as as far as this one goes, it seems to be performing just fine. Also, Safari um, is responding a bit late, as you can see. If I quickly scroll back and forth, um, it just there's a delay. Safari seems to be optimizing it itself. Okay, that's good to know. Okay, looks very nice actually. So if I set this to 700, the effect is going to be even more subtle. Okay, I think I prefer 700, but that brings us to another problem so if the websites um, if the if this window size is very small like this then oh it's never gonna be a... hmm if I refresh now okay we have to set this effect to the height of the landing area and I believe I've defined the max height for that area or min height sorry min uh, height so the minimum height is 750 pixels if we set our divider to 750 pixels then um, as soon as as soon as the user reaches the about me section um, the navbar is going to get fully opaque so I'm going to set this to 750 pixels for now and let's see that if, let's see that on action in action I'm, I'm scrolling down and as soon as I reach here the opacity goes to super dark okay that's that's very good to know that's very good to see as well nice okay and I don't want this to go to uh, one so what I could do is so instead of setting transparency to one I can do something like multiply by um, 0.85 in here and that's that's going to ensure that I never go past 85% transparency so even if I'm here you can you should be able to see oh okay it's going past one all right I see so dividing this by 700 750 doesn't do anything uh, because if I scroll more than 750 750 pixels 
this value is going to be more than one. And let's say if it's two, if I multiply this with by 0.85, it's still going to be greater than one. That's not what I want. So I want to set a limit for this value, right? Um, so I need to use this thing again. Um, or I, I might need to create another if statement actually. Let's do that. So if we do this window dot page y offset is less than, or let's use greater than. If it's greater than 750 or 750, then um, set transparency to one. Um, else, let me do this operation. Okay, this will ensure that we still have some transparency even if we go above the limit. And yes, that works beautifully. Okay, that transition is so smooth. It looks so nice. Great. Well, um, I guess I'm going to keep it this way. So as I keep scrolling, it becomes less and less transparent. Maybe I can change the 750 to something a bit less. So let's use 500 because 750 is, well, it doesn't look that good. So I want it to be a bit more opaque at this level. Yeah, that's fine. I want, so when it's going over this text, I want these ones to be more legible than the background, obviously. So I need to increase the blur as well. So let's increase the blur a little bit too. So as we scroll, I want to change uh, the blur to be a bit more. And if I put this in here, and if I replace three pixels with 10 pixels now, it's it's probably going to blur a lot more. And I'm going to get rid of this for a minute. Let's see if that works. Maybe we can use some trial and error. Yep, that's actually how you set blur. Cool, good to know. And this value, you are going to you're going to use the same thing. Uh, you are going to use the transparency variable in here. We might um, rename the variable to be something more meaningful because we're using it in multiple places now. So let's use the transparency in here and let's multiply this value with 10. So as we scroll down, our, our background is gonna get more blurry. So as I'm scrolling down, well, that doesn't seem to work. Oh, because we forgot to put pixels in here. You need to mention the pixels. Yep, that seems to be working. So if I scroll up, the blurriness should get less and less. And at the top, it should disappear. Yep, as you can see, it's not blurry. It's increasing now. So you can still read I make things in there. But if I scroll down a little bit, the blurriness has increased a lot more. And if I scroll down in here, the blurriness is a lot. So if I scroll here, you, you're not able to read projects anymore. Okay. Let's try not 10, but five. That's a bit too much, right? Okay, now you can see some some stuff. Like you can't specifically read that it's projects, but you can still see that there's some text in there. Okay, that's that looks very nice actually. So I scroll down and as soon as I finish scrolling, the nav bar just reappears again. Okay, that looks very nice. That's exactly what I wanted to do actually. So that means I can get rid of this class now. And if I get rid of that class, that means I can replace this with null. And I can get rid of this class in here. Okay. We need to think about the mobile version though. So this is very nice for desktop, right? As, 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 as you scroll down, the background blur increases and increases and increases. And then, and then the now bar becomes this grayish color. Okay. But what about the mobile version? So let's think a bit more about what we're going to do in mobile. So we have transparent. We have a transparent now in here. And as I keep scrolling down, okay, that looks good as well. I wasn't expecting this it to look this good. Now we just need to make this button um, change the background color of the whole now bar. But that's probably something that I can do very easily. 
Okay. First thing we're going to do is we're going to make the background of this button transparent. That yellow is very ugly. So let's get rid of this navbar color. So that's the white blank, that's the brand navbar toggle. Yep, let's get rid of that. So what does that give us? That gives us an ugly gray. Okay, that means we need to set it to transparent. So background, transparent. There you go. Okay, now there's a transparent button there. Cool. Next thing we're going to do, if um, so depending on which version of the website we're running, like depending on if you're the mobile in the mobile version or depending on if you're at the desktop version you need to apply different styles and we have this class in here or this variable in here that we used before um, in there so it's going to function as usual if the user is on, on a mobile uh, if the user is on a mobile phone uh, what i mean by that is if they don't click the button i'm going to keep this exact behavior so as they scroll down, um, the color of the navbar is just going to get darker and the background blur is going to increase. But as soon as they click the button, that's when things are going to change. So depending on if they click the button or not, we're going to swap between this style and another style. So the other style, I can probably, I'm, I haven't done this before, but I think what, what we could do is um, we can ask if, um, so if the mobile navbar is collapsed, then use this style. If it's not collapsed, we will define another another one. And I'm going to copy these two and let's change this to, I don't know, fully red, just because I want to see the effects. So let's set this to zero. Let's set that to zero. And I, I want no transparency, well, 0.85 seems fine. So as soon as I click the button, um, yep. As soon as I click the button, the background color should change now, hopefully. Yeah. And you can see it transitions into the into the new color. Okay, that's exactly what I wanted. Cool. And um, now I'm going to, well, I'm going to do exactly the same thing, right? So I'm going to copy and paste this thing, and I'm just going to get rid of the transparency modifier in here. Okay. Well, hopefully that will solve the other issues, but whatever. Let's try again. So when I click this, you see that the background color transitions into another one. That's pretty cool, right? Well, I guess that's that's the navbar done. And I don't want this ugly yellow um, color over there, but that doesn't show in mobile phones anyway. This is just in Google Chrome when you're modifying, when you're editing on a desktop. So Let's try. If you scroll down, the color gets darker and darker. And as soon as you click, it gets dark. And if you click back, it reverts back to the original color. And if you scroll down quickly, then it transitions. That takes a while. And I'm guessing that's because we are changing the blur at the same time as the background color. So on desktop, let me see how quick it is. Okay, on a desktop, it's fairly quick. Let me try on an iPhone. This is how it looks like as soon as I tap the button. Um, the background color changes to something dark and if I keep slowly scrolling down the background color slowly changes and gets darker and darker and darker and the menu looks like this and if I scroll up and then tap again it will revert back to normal if I'm in a middle state like this if I tap it will get dark if I tap again it will get more um, more transparent this looks so nice actually but I've noticed another problem. So on the mobile version, if I scroll down, then um, the background blur just disappears. And I'm guessing that's because we assigned that style again in here. Yep, that's why. Okay. And this is way better than before. And yeah. Up next is animating this, by the way. We want a nice animation on this navbar button over here. And yeah, that's it for today. Thank you for joining the stream. And I will see you on the next one. All right, bye.